Hey there, friend Arenos. We're live with episode number two of Hot News, the show with the hottest information and even hotter jingle. Reese is still working on getting to that. Right, Reese? Yeah. Well, we got a bunch of fresh fire to drop on you all today, especially when it comes to the next gen GPUs. So let's just hopscotch into it. Let's start with news about Nvidia's Turing series of GPUs. We already gave you all a rundown of everything that we had heard behind the scenes regarding Nvidia's GTX 11 series cards during our trip to Computex in Taiwan. From our estimations and discussion with AIB partners, they were looking at a launch of August for the Founders Edition cards and September for the custom versions of the GTX 1180. It appears that Igor from Tom's Hardware Germany is getting the information that Nvidia has begun training employees from the development departments of the board partners. This means that Nvidia is definitely gearing up to make sure that these cards go on sale soon. There's a typical three month time frame that you can use to ballpark from the start of training until the actual sales and that puts us right in line with the current August slash September estimates. It can also be noted that Nvidia has released a bill of materials to its partners which gives them the indication of everything they'll need to actually start producing these sweet GPUs that you all are craving more than I crave Swedish fish. Yes, I know they taste like candied cough syrup, but I love them so much. The Bill of Materials timeline indicates things like engineering validation, electromagnetic interference tests, production validation tests, all the way up to mass production and shipping. Using the timeline for all of those items compared against when the AIB partners got the BOM, we're again looking at the same late Q3 release window. It's been a long, arduous road of rumors to get us to this point now, but now that NVIDIA is starting to dole out more info to more companies about their sacred frame rate producers, we'll hopefully get a clearer pr picture of performance and specs moving forward. Because, you know, the old adage applies well here. The more people you put on a boat, the more GPU leaks you get. Which, let's jump ship to our red comrades. AMD created Navi for PlayStation 5. We've already covered how it's likely that PlayStation 5 would be using a Zen-based CPU and a Navi-based GPU. Alongside that, there was rumors that AMD would debut the Navi architecture on Sony's next-gen console. Now, there's a bit more insight into those speculations as it appears that the 7 nanometer Navi graphics architecture has been developed with Sony and PlayStation squarely in mind not just as a product to stick their technology into, but rather as the purpose behind the architecture. So that may seem a bit odd, but with context, the notion behind it doesn't actually come across as too far-fetched. It's been no secret that AMD has struggled to keep up with Nvidia when it comes to the higher-end graphics card market. Vega wasn't a raging success and took far too long to reach the market, and now we might have a clearer picture as to why. Apparently, when Lisa Su took the helm at AMD, she wanted the company to focus on one, regaining a whole bunch of money, but then also on their CPU strengths and not necessarily the graphics department. And even with Radeon Technologies Group, she didn't want Raja Kadori trying to go toe to toe with Nvidia. The reason behind it was actually pretty simple. It takes a butt ton of cash to innovate in the desktop GP market and to try to compete for the performance crown. So with AMD already being so money starved, it made more sense to her to play in the space where they can make the most profit. In case you haven't guessed it, that's the console gaming slash semi-custom graphics department. Allegedly, up to two-thirds of RTG's engineering team was dedicated to working on Navi with Sony, while only the remaining third was allocated to finalizing the ARC's Vega lineup. This potential new light helps to illuminate a few things that we've already been hearing in the rumor mill. Navi won't be a high-end desktop solution and will only compete in the mid-range. It will have a middle-of-the-road price, and Roger Kadori jumped ship as soon as Vega was released because he just had to get out of there. If AMD spent all of their time and effort on creating a semi-custom solution for Sony and the next-gen consoles, a mid-tier desktop GPU kind of fits the bill with Navi as far as what it can, we could expect as consumers. And if this development was much to the chagrin of the guy at the charge of RTG, then him leaving as soon as he released his first product also makes sense in context. 
I'm going to put links in the description for you all to evaluate the validity of these stories, but I feel like this is a thread that kind of helps sew together some of the other pieces of fabric that we've been getting at the Rumor Thrift Shop. Which, let's transition to less rumor and more fact. Intel confirms dedicated GPUs for 2020. So to round out the RGB section of GPU news, Intel themselves have confirmed that they'll be dropping a discrete GPU in just a couple of years. That's all the official information that's been confirmed by Intel. Fascinating stuff. It's still very much a rumor that they will be releasing a gaming GPU, but it's a rumor that we hope actually pans out. And given the other story we just discussed about how Raja was disappointed that he couldn't perfect Vega for the consumers, I can imagine that he'd be looking to redeem himself with a hot new album drop at his new employer. Then, our last little bit of Intel news. Intel develops a spin qubit chip. Do you know anything about quantum computing? No? Good, that means I can make the rest of this up and hopefully you won't understand what I'm fictionalizing. Apparently, Intel has designed new spin qubit chips that's smaller than the eraser on a pencil. It was created in their D1D fab in Oregon and needs to be run at 460 degrees below zero. Fahrenheit, of course, because America. No word on how Intel will be using their new super tiny chips, but hopefully they can help discover a universe where No Man's Sky was actually good at launch. What's that, Tank? Quantum computing doesn't give us access to multiple universes? Then what's the freaking point? Whatever, forget my hopes and dreams. Then we have word that 2019 iPhones are likely to sport USB-C. So in a move to help redesign chargers and charging interfaces for the next gen iOS devices, and to also standardize with their MacBook lineup, there's a report that upcoming iPhones will use USB Type-C charging. Although I have to say that I'm kind of with MKBHD on this one. I'll believe it when I see it. Apple likes giving up their proprietary standards the same way that the imperial system likes to count things in a logical manner. 5,280 feet in a mile is so obvious. You metric folk live a sheltered life. And then it also appears that Uber is working on an AI that can tell if you're drunk. So using input data like how quickly you're typing, how you tap the buttons in the app, how quickly you're walking, and the orientation you're holding your phone, they'll evaluate your level of sobriety. Now, before you go raging about how it doesn't matter if you're drunk and Uber shouldn't be trying to figure this out, just consider that not every Uber driver wants to hear you sing Shania Twain's greatest hits while fighting back your gag reflex because you just had to have that one last shot of tequila. <sighs> this will allow the drivers to decline the fare based on your level of inebriation and could potentially give you a driver who's more trained to deal with your loud mouthery. Then let's wrap it up with some game news. Nintendo's E3 conference happened and we got a good look at the new Super Smash Bros Ultimate, which includes every character from previous SSB games, excluding Waluigi, cause he's a tool. <laughs> We can expect the game to drop in December. Super Mario Party will be dropping in October, and as far as third-party games, Fortnite and Hollow Knight are out on Switch right now, with Dragon Ball Fighter Z, Wolfenstein 2, and Square Enix's Octopath Traveler dropping at a later date. Fortnite dropping on Switch is great and all, but apparently, you can't transfer your Epic account from PS4. In a move that enraged quite a few children across the interweaves, you can't cross-play your account from PlayStation onto the Switch for Fortnite. You'll have to start from scratch and work your way back up the ranks of who can build buildings the fastest, or however Fortnite works. Then, the news that I'm most excited for, also known as this new segment, The Forest Fire. God of War is getting new Game Plus! I've wanted this ever since I beat the game opening weekend. It'll be a free update dropping soon and comes with harder difficulty to help compensate for the better stats and weapons that you'll roll over from the end game. And that's going to wrap it up for today's edition of Hot News. Hot News! Hot News! Which piece of news got you the most hot and bothered? Let's chat about anything and everything I mentioned today down in the comments below. Also, let me know if there's any bit of news that I missed that you might want me to cover in tomorrow's episode. Also, let me know down there. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit that like button to show support for this series that we're doing on the channel. And if you actually like it, be sure to get subscribed to stay up to date on this and the rest of our tech-related content. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see your smiling faces again later. Cheerio.